can also uh, add in what are called guide tones. Uh, again, I'm sure a lot of you know what guide tones are, but for those of you that don't, uh, the guide tones are the basic notes of a chord that define its sort of essential quality. So if I was playing a minor chord, minor seven chord, I would play the root, I would play the third, minor third, and then the minor seventh. I can also invert that, because sometimes when you play things too low, occasionally they sound a little muddy. I can also take advantage of the range of the instrument and play things inverted. So instead of going C, E flat, B flat, I'll put the E flat up top here, so it looks like this. So, in, in essence, what I'm doing is I'm playing the third and seventh, or the seventh and third of each chord. And in this particular case, this tune, most, not all, but I'd say about 95% of the melody notes are the third of the chord. So, if I do this, that's the minor third of the chord. So, if I want to make it sound a little bit more complete, uh, in terms of the guy tones or these bargain basement notes, I would just add the seventh to that. So, I've got the melody. So I'm just playing the root, the flat seven of the chord, and the melody, which in this case is the flat, is the flat three. So in terms of like basic harmony and the, the sort of the essence of the, of the tune from a very very basic perspective, I don't really have to play anything more. I mean, of course, I want to add other things. I mean, I can do all kinds of other things, you know, uh, substitutes and whatnot. But we'll get to that at another point. So right now, now one of the challenges is to try and make the sound evenly distributed between the two notes. You want to make sure the E harmonic is the same volume as the D, which is three strings away, or two strings away, rather. So they have to be evenly matched. Now if you want, you can actually try playing them separately as an example three, which is like this. So I have the E harmonic, followed by D open with my third finger. And then I go up one string to A harmonic, G open, D harmonic, B open, G harmonic, open E. What you gradually do is increase the speed. So example one sounds like this. Example two sounds like this. So example two once again is a harmonic on the lower of the two notes playing simultaneously a string uh, or a note uh, in an open register, two strings away, and going up one string at a time. And if you do it just right dynamically, or in terms of volume, it should sound evenly matched. And then you can experiment with playing them slightly faster. And example three once again is alternating between the harmonic and then the note you just plucked which is an open note. It's extremely important to get the nice dynamic blending between the two. Uh, let's say a vocalist or a horn player is playing the melody, you know, ba da da, pardon my singing, ba da da da, ba da 
So what I'm doing now, uh, you can see in my right hand, I'm not going like this. I'm not going like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I would do that initially to get the shapes. Also, too, you notice I'm trying to play them as low as possible because there's no bass player, so I have to play the bass notes. So I don't want to, if I do this, I mean, it sounds okay, but if, if I just do that and there's no bass player, it's going to sound very thin because there's nothing happening on the bottom. So I'm trying to sort of use uh, the lower range of the instrument to try and sort of approximate what a bass player would be. I mean, I think get close and then you want to try and do that rhythmically so if i do this now i'll do that slower Example 13, I've got a C69, major 7. And what I'm going to do is do a backward sweep like I did in example 6, which was this, just to remind you. So again, any chord I play. Anything I play down here, lower on the neck. If I play an octave higher, and you do it carefully and pay attention to be making sure you're an octave, literally 12 frets higher, all the notes should come out. Uh, so example 13, I have a C69 major 7. I'll take that same shape and I'll move it up 3 frets, or minor 3rd, and I'll be playing an E flat 6 9 major 7. And I'll drop it a semitone to D, and then to D flat. So if I put them all together in time, it sounds like this. Then if you want, you can practice breaking them up, like example 12. 